Amnesia the Bunker is a highly immersive horror game in which only characters are the player, the monster, and the terrible atmosphere. The game uses a randomized object placement mechanism, making every journey beyond the safe area unpredictable and unsettling. The game stresses caution, exploration, and a strategic decision-making to live, with activities such as running, activating your flashlight, or shooting a weapon influencing the likelihood of a monster arriving. My hands are trembling simply recalling the pressure that I felt. The game's tale is disturbing contraction that has a severe emotional impact where the pieces are ultimately put together. Players eventually explore the plot by exploring with notes and diaries, more to that later by the way. Waking up in the empty bunker to find a large cast of now deceased French soldiers adds a depth and interest to the experience. The game's limited inventory structure stresses the need to manage resources like gasoline, healing consumables, and the explosives. I noticed that there's a little bit of a claustrophobic design, heightens the atmospheric dread and the suspense, and the requirement to use a generator repeatedly added to the strain for me. As a result, my gameplay experience became a lot more exciting and perhaps even very much terrifying. The distinctive level design and great sound design create a, a sense of the anxiety, and do not forget that the terrible jump scares as well. With the complex labyrinthian universe and various paths to explore, the game requires players to think tactically to survive, and a little bit more about that later. Amnesia the Bunker departs from the frictionless prior horror games by focusing on a horror of war and humanity does to itself. The fact that the Western Front as the battlefield produced a pulse-pounding, horrifying hellscape. Best of all, the game's immersive aspects are thoroughly articulated, giving a clear picture of the environment and the atmosphere. Amnesia the Dark Descent was a watershed moment that returned the survival horror genre to its roots. The game depended on players' imaginations and worries rather than jump scares or violence. Some players may find the game's horror features such as the monsters, mutant rats and traps too intense or terrifying. If so, I recommend starting with the easy mode. That way you will receive the story and the sense of mood. You may believe that the overall experience falls short when compared to the developer's past releases. Furthermore, the game's emphasis on managing limited resources can be unpleasant or overwhelming at times, particularly considering the gameplay loop of dying and restarting in the safe room. Not all the time, of course, but there were times where I felt stuck and just didn't want to continue. Not to mention the dying repeatedly can detract from the game's atmosphere. And the story is told through diaries, notes, and images, which I thought to be a bit slow and hindered me from actually playing the game for longer. I wish they had designed a system that allowed me to experience it via the radio or short writings on the wall, among other things. In terms of the playability, the confined level layout and the bottlenecks between parts of can be restrictive. This may exacerbate your inherent sense of curiosity and discovery, overall the gameplay mechanics did not provide me with enough information to keep me engaged in the tale or the characters. In the end, it was all about the scares and the surge of the adrenaline. Amnesia the Bunker boasts unique gameplay aspect. The game's replay value is a positive, since even if you played for the experience of the story or on perhaps like an easier difficulty with no major scares, there are additional difficulties that allow you to play on the subsequent playthroughs. While it's not a game, the longer you play it, the more awarded you will get. Personally, I had a nice and thrilling experience with the game. The game is not only enjoyable, but as though it has some truly terrifying and quite horrific moments.